Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey here, and on today's episode, we're gonna reveal who's under the mask of the tree, or the Christmas tree, it's a Christmas tree, on the mask singer. Now we're gonna go through the clues and the pitch correct audio, but before we do, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up, and please subscribe because Nala loves the subscribers, right? Right, say I love you, no? Well, let's get started. Now, for those who are new to the YouTube channel, hi, how are you? My name is Joey Contino. I'm an executive audio producer here in beautiful New York City where it is freezing. Can someone please turn on the heat? Anyway, it's my job as an executive audio producer to go out into the world every single night and find audio for stations. That's whether it's TV, maybe it's music, you never know. Could be anything. Now, when that audio sounds bad, it's also my job to make it sound good. In order to do that, I could either EQ out a frequency, maybe pitch something up, maybe slow something down. It could be many different things. But every single week, The Mask Singer airs these clue videos where the celebrities talking and giving us clues about themselves. But Fox is smart. They said, ah, uh, we can't let them use their real voice because if we do, then people are gonna know who it is. So let's speed up their voice and pitch it up so that we have no idea who it is. Well, that had me thinking last season, why don't we slow it down and pitch correct it, and then we can hear the real celebrity voice. That plus the clues, we could reveal who is under the mask. And right now, we're gonna do that with the tree, or Christmas tree, whatever you wanna call it. Now, if you're like me, you probably write down a mess load of clues, which I have here on my laptop, and we're gonna go through the clues. So first, we'll just name all the clues, then we'll listen to the audio, and then we'll go through all the clues again to kind of match up who we think it is. So let's get started. Now, we've been getting clues for the tree since the preseason episode, which aired uh, two weeks beforehand. Um, we had different clues such as, the tree talked about her delicious performances with a very strong emphasis on that word delicious. We saw that her costume was designed to look like a 1950s pinup girl. And the tree said that security guards made her feel like precious cargo. On episode one, she talked about how she's only loved and really known for one thing around Christmas time. Uh, she said that she loved to get dialed up. Uh, then we saw a public storage locker with the number 30 outside. Then from episode five, when she came back, she says that she's not a regular tree, she's a cool tree. She claimed that she was a brand ambassador for something food related. Uh, she showed that she played piano. She talked about jazzing it up. She said that her parents told her growing up that she should be true to herself and that she was their favorite elf. Then it went on to random shots of the White House. Then she talked about being as colorful as a fruitcake. And then episode seven, which was this past week episode, we saw a Washington DC flag. Uh, we saw a theater playbill, but it was blank on top and it had three pennies, so I'm really not sure what that had to do with anything, but um, she says, let me tell you, I work really well with others, and then she kissed a cartoon tree? Not really sure what the heck that was all about. She says, when I put on this mask, it feels like I was beamed up into another dimension. And the last clue, which was a physical clue, one that they showed us on stage, was a bowl of soup. She says, if it wasn't for the soup, I'm not sure I would be where I am today. So those are all the clues. A lot of good ones in there to determine who is the tree. Now before we answer those questions, let's listen to the audio. Here's the original audio that Fox gave us. Getting this far against so many great singers has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had. Now we slowed it down and we pitch corrected it. And this is the audio that we got. Getting this far against so many great singers has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had. But I will say, the hardest part of this whole funky thing is learning to stand on my own two purple stumps for the first time. And let me tell you, I work really well with others. So when I put on this mask, it was like I'd been beamed up into another dimension. Where I'm alone, like the new girl at school. Ooh, maybe I'll hang out with those strangers with candy. Tonight, it's all about showing the judges and myself that there are no more excuses and that this tree can stand tall. Any guesses on who you think it is? Well, we think it's Anna Gasteyer. And now here's why. Let's go through all the clues and answer all those questions that you guys are probably going through your head right now saying, wait, wait, what? How? How's that possible? Let's start from the top, okay? So from the very first sneak peek, she talked about her delicious performances. 
Well, she is known for one really famous skit on SNL that's called Delicious Dish. Now, of course, there's one episode in particular that stands out, Sweaty Balls, which we'll get to later. But um, that's where that clue delicious comes from. Here's a clip of that. The delicious, delicious dish. Next, from episode one, she talked about how she's only loved during one time of year at Christmas time. Um, well, once again, with the sweaty balls, that was a Christmas skit. And I mean, that's what really put her on the map. If you go through all her skits, she's really only known for just that one. You think about it right now and you Google it. Out of all the SNL skits, out of the six years she was on that show, She's really only known for that one, and it's always around Christmas time. Next, she talked about always liking to be dialed up and always looking fresh. Well, she talked about that multiple times in real life where she always does her hair, her nails have to be perfect, and she likes to be wearing a dress of some kind. Then she went into the public storage locker number 30. It's a big clue. 30 Rock is where SNL is filmed, so there goes your 30. Then from episode six, she says, I'm not a regular tree, I'm a cool tree. Well, I know this is kind of far-fetched, but you gotta believe it. She was in this movie called Mean Girls, which is actually written by Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. And in that movie, Amy Poehler's character says, I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Then she went on and claimed that she was a brand ambassador for something food-related. Well, she is a brand ambassador for Weight Watchers, so it is food-related. It's just it's losing, losing weight, not really eating food. Then there was pictures of the White House. Well, for those who don't know, she's from Washington, D.C. Her father was a politician, well, a lobbyist. So she spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C., especially growing up there and going to university there. And the last clue that we have from that episode is that she talks about being as colorful as a fruitcake, and that references to sweaty balls at SNL once again, where Alec Baldwin, who she acts with in the skit, talks about fruitcake. Now for this past week's episode, we saw the Washington, D.C. flag again, once again, she's from Washington, D.C. She went to school in Washington, D.C. Then we saw the playbill that was blank, which refers to her doing, I mean, a multitude of different Broadway shows. Um, and that's probably why they left it blank, because she's been in so many of them, she can't just put one to be recognized in. Then she talked about always working well with others, which refers to her really never being her own solo act. On Broadway, she was with a group. SNL, she was with a group. Always acting in movies as a group. Um, and this is the first time she's in her own solo career, which we'll get to a little bit later. She said that when she puts her mask on, she feels like she's been beamed up to another dimension. That is a reference to her TBS TV show, I think it's called People of Earth. And then last clue that we have from this episode was a physical clue, which was soup. Which for those who don't know, she got her start on a little TV show called Seinfeld on the episode titled The Soup Nazi where I know she's only in it for a few seconds, where she goes in to get soup and was denied soup. And from there, she got a lot of her, a lot of her big roles just from that one episode. Now, there are other clues that we could go through, such as her talking about jazzing it up. For those who don't know, she put out a jazz album in 2014, and she just put out a new Christmas album, I want to say literally two weeks ago. I believe it's called Sugar and Booze. And then the only other clue that we could think of is her playing the piano, which she does play piano in real life. Now, I want to know, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments section. Now, I do want to go ahead and play the pitch correct audio for the rest of the contestants. That way you guys can listen to them and also guess in the comment section below. So here you go. Last performance, I let my guard down and sang from the heart. But let's be real, I'm used to my voice winning over the ladies. What's up, Nicole? After I put on a good show, I always like to break bread with the homies. And this is how we do it. Feel free to snoop into my life. You'd see that my pops taught me how to serenade the ladies, and I haven't stopped since. So, Nicola Majig, tonight this song's for you. And I ain't too proud to beg. Rehearsing for my last performance, there was an accident, and I suffered an electric shock that nearly knocked me out. All my insecurities about performing resurfaced. But I couldn't let that setback stand in my way. Becoming the butterfly, has reignited a love I've had since I was seven years old. I found others modeled just like me and was welcomed into the choir's joyful noise. It made me feel safe, even in the hardest times. This bleeding love has given me the highest of highs. It sadly led to the lowest of lows. 
As the butterfly, I am taking charge and reclaiming what I thought I'd lost, because this is what I was meant to do. Performing under this mask has been so liberating. Like, I have nothing to lose. I haven't felt this free since I was a young cub on the road, jamming with my pack of misfits and discovering who I really was. Being in this competition makes me feel like I did in the old days. People say that a leopard can't change their spots, but that's just not true. I'm a fresh new edition of the old me. Tonight, I'm reliving my teenage dream by performing like no one is watching, free as can be. After my last performance, I realized that being the flamingo is one of the greatest opportunities of my life. Mira, the real truth is, my story's not all fantasy. See, years ago, I started hating the sound of my own voice. And being on stage became one of my biggest fears. But now as the flamingo, when I hear I've done a good job, I'm relearning how to say thank you. And I'm reminded that I can do it all. I've danced, sung, and acted my way to the top. So tonight, it's going to just be me and my voice. And I'm finally okay with that. Thank you for helping me see that this bird is anything but basic. When I started this competition, I never would have imagined I'd make it this far. Hearing all the love for these past few weeks has made me feel so grateful. Let me tell you, the story of my life didn't always look like this. I didn't take the conventional route to stardom. And while there were tough times, I wouldn't change a single moment. Because it's led me to every opportunity I've had, on screen and off. Tonight, I'm leaving my heart on the stage and showing a side of myself I don't normally share because I'm not ready to take this mask off anytime soon. Getting this far against so many great singers has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had. But I will say, the hardest part of this whole funky thing is learning to stand on my own two purple stumps for the first time. And let me tell you, I work really well with others. So when I put on this mask, it was like I'd been beamed up into another dimension. Where I'm alone, like the new girl at school. Ooh, maybe I'll hang out with those strangers with candy. Tonight, it's all about showing the judges and myself that there are no more excuses. And that this tree can stand tall. As a young bud, I couldn't have imagined I'd ever be a competitor in something like this. Being on stage was always my dream, girls. But I was shy about showing my talent. I'm still an introvert, and on my days off, I love when it's oh so quiet. Nothing makes me happier than kicking off my shoes and lying in rapture in my own secret garden. But listen up, sweethearts. When the spotlight calls, this shy petal knows how to bloom. So tonight, I'm gonna throw the panel off my scent. Because nobody's gonna pick me out of this competition, boo-boo. I will survive. The love I've received these past few weeks has let a whole new side of myself shine. I'm always dreaming about entertaining people on tour. In my 30-year career, I've accomplished many things in pursuit of this dream. I've won multiple awards and become a household name, but I'm mostly known for being part of a pack of talented fellas. Not my voice alone. So tonight, with this mask on, I'm gonna prove that I'm a superhero all by myself. Because this fox is one in a million. Now, thank you for joining me. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Nala would really like that, by the way. I also think we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before Thanksgiving, so we get, what, a week and a half? So please, as they say on here, slam that subscribe button or like button or whatever the heck it is. And if you stay to the end of the video, I always go ahead and leave you guys with a question. And today's question is this. What is the coolest thing in your town? So write the name of your town or write the coolest thing or museum or whatever is in your town. But once again, thank you for joining me. I'm Joey, and I'll see you later. Bye!